I'm a mean, green, steel-eyed fox. I ain't no little Goldilocks. If I want a big belly meal, I don't cook. I just steal. Yeah. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And this here is Frank. Festive as ever because it is Christmas Eve, it's his, everybody. It's, the, it's a deconstructed bow for the last bow. Oh, the last bow. The 12th bow. Yes. On the 12th day of Christmas. My true love to me, Frank. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's Christmas Eve, guys. It's good to be here. It's good to be alive. Mm-hmm. We... Yesterday, if you watched our podcast on Don't Tell Me, Walk Through Thursday, Isaiah, mm-hmm. you saw that we were both going to decorate our mic stands for Christmas. Yeah. And the winner was going to get a $100 Visa gift card. <laughs> From the viewers. <laughs> From the viewers. And um, mine is SpongeBob themed. And yours. I, I like yours. You Thanks. Know? You don't normally think of blue for Christmas. I like blue for Christmas. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not that traditional... Maybe it could be traditional, but I don't know. It's it's not standard. It's not what you think of. But I have a little candy here, and I have these, and I like blue lights for Christmas, and um, and it matches my blue award over here. Well, fun. Mine matches. Oh wait, I have my so my advent presents. Oh, I have a new one for you. And I'll put red and green. Okay. Ooh, water. <laughs> oh, it's um probiotic water. Whatever that means. That's never going to show up, but it's mixed berry flavor. You know how much I love flavored water. And it's called Smile, and it's red for Christmas Eve. Awesome. Thank you. For all the people that are watching, um, we're here with you, no matter if you are happy or sad. Yeah, you know, Christmas time is not always happy for everyone. Right. But the one thing you can always do in Christmas time is spread Christmas cheer. Yeah. And that doesn't always mean... You are going to ring bells in people's faces and sing carols um, unsolicitedly. Yeah. Sometimes all it means is lending a helping hand. And that's what we're doing today. We're lending our hand to you. But that's enough of that. You talked Um, about yesterday's podcast, which was which was about wise men uh, being wise. Yes. And not and to be careful not to listen to. People that you assume are wise. Or claim to be wise. Claim to be wise. But um, the wise men that obviously we're, we're going to talk about today for a little bit are the wise men from the nativity. The magi or the three kings. Three kings. I heard that they're three kings, but they're actually, they weren't kings. They were, they were probably more like priests mm. because the kings um, were looking for them, you know, talking yeah. to them. But they were highly regarded. And they were like seers, right? Like they Yeah, they also well, um, that's how they followed the star because yeah. astrology, science, and religion all went together at that time. Wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if it still went together? Wouldn't it be <laughs> nice? Um, do you know their names? Uh Bartholomew is one? No, it's the name that you wanted to actually name yourself. Balthazar. That's Balthazar. what it is. Balthazar. Balthazar. I don't think I'd be Melchior. Able to it. Never would have gotten that. And Gasper. 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 I kind of like the name Gasper. Mm-hmm. I like that name for a cat. Well, that's Casper. But you can name a, a cat Gasper. You could. Actually, on this, it says Gasper or Casper. Gasper, Casper, or Doc. Gasper is known for bringing. Do you know the? Do you know the um, gifts? Yes. The gifts of the Magi are frankincense, myrrh. And gold? Yeah. Usually people say it in a different order. So that was a little like, is he going to get this? I feel like frankincense is my favorite to say. And then it goes frankincense and myrrh. Yeah. And I just forgot about gold. Do you know what frankincense is? Is it a perfume? Well, Melchior. What? Nope, not Melchior. Not him. Who was it? Oh, yeah. Gasper, your friend. Yes. Was, was, well, it, it, they don't know who brought white, but, um, you know, this is what they use to represent. And um, yeah. they, they even put them in certain colors for in all the nativity scenes. What color is the gold one? The gold one, um, it's gold. Green cloak, gold crown, green jewels is Gasper with the frankincense. Um, purple cloak is Balthazar, and gold cloak is Melchior bringing the gold. Yes, but the frankincense, um, supposedly that represents 
uh, did you say perfume? Yeah, it's like a, yeah. It's, it's like an incense, and it's used for worship in churches. Mm. So it's like this this baby will be worshipped as he gets older. The gold was because he was a king. Yes, and the myrrh. The myrrh is actually perfume for dead bodies. Oh, yeah. Once again, making yeah. we we saw that with um, what was it called? The the wrapping cloth. Yeah, cro- the um the cloth. Oh my god! Swaddling cloth. Yeah, swaddling cloths. Yeah. Swaddling cloth. He was wrapped in that instead of a blanket. Right. And there is a parallel to the fact that at the time you would wrap dead bodies in that. Right. And it was all foreseeing that Jesus is um pro- the prophecy of Jesus to mm-hmm. come and then have to die. Right. For us. Right. And so. If you know the story of the wise men, um, King Herod is the one who I- I- employed them and said, yeah. I heard there's, a- I'm hearing word on the street. Mm-hmm. Yo, I heard there's this new king. They're calling him the king of kings. Yeah. Go find him for me. Right. So they and said, they, okay. Okay. And they found him. But instead of reporting back to Herod, they gave him gifts and they said, peace. Yeah. This dude's the real deal. They had a dream. Um. Did they all have it together? One guy had it. I don't know. But there was a dream that warned them. I imagine they like sleep in like a triple bunk bed. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they construct every, everywhere they go. Yeah. Um. So they were warned in this dream to not tell Herod. And so, yes, they went back to their lands because they, you know. They had they nothing to tell. Somewhere else. There's nothing to, nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Well, then Herod ended up killing a lot of babies. We don't like Herod very much. Well. Everything is is in the scripture. So every time people would tell Jesus, I don't like this very much. This is not, this does not sound kosher. (laughs) He would say it's in the scriptures. That's why we're doing it. And it's going to all be okay in the end. to the plan, people. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. Oh, I like that. I like Mm -hmm. that for a shirt. Yeah, I didn't make it up. I mean, Um, yeah, it's, but (laughs) you still have a shirt. Nope. You can. It's, people say it. They say Everything will be okay in the end, and if it's not okay, it's not the end. Huh. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna get it tattooed on my rib cage. Right here. Oh, remember when we talked about tattooing Frank? Vaguely. Now that I see all his skin exposed, it's just like a, I would love if it worked well. Yeah. I don't know if it would. Like it an actual tattoo gun. Yeah. Oh, actual tattoo gun. Yeah, I don't want to sharpie him. Yeah, because I had I've I've drawn on many Barbies, and um, it bleeds into the rubber. Yeah. So it's very it's a very messy um. Line. I wonder. It's a very blurry line. Well, what, well like um, what's it called tattoo artists. Mm-hmm. They are able to. They get like fake skin. Yeah, you can buy it on Amazon. Yeah, it's just like a and practice rectangle. Yeah. I'm gonna look it up. Maybe we could start tattooing Frank for Christmas. But we don't know how to draw. Yeah. Well, that's how you learn. On people. <laughs> we'll start with his back. Yeah. And then work away to the face. Like put like faith right here. Now you just made him lose his mistletoe. Oh. Oh, I'm just going to stop touching everything. Oh, 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 dear. But, um, yeah, the Magi were, were pretty cool. There was one time at CCD where um, th- we were putting on a nativity play. And um, did I ever tell my other story about um, being miscast in a play? <laughs> I when don't I was know. supposed to be the fox? Oh, I don't know. I think you sang the song or you referenced it. but Okay. Well, there's been a couple of times where I have been... um. <sighs> miscast severely um really just killing my self-esteem but this time was the nativity at our ccd we we're all doing it i missed the day that people were choosing their roles Aww. my two brothers who were in my class were the wise men one wise men two. Oh my god i remember this i was, I was spo- furious i was supposed to be wise man three of course but some other dork of course i hope he does i hope he's doing well but Took the the third wise man. I was I was the shepherd. I was so mad. The teacher should have known better. I know. The teacher should have known better. I know. It three was three brothers in a class. It was ridiculous. And, and and I'm over there with the shepherd. I had like a cloak with like the I know thing. It was it was so frustrating. That's the second time I was miscast. I'll tell you the first time because I'm getting a little heated. Christmas Eve. <laughs> Christmas Eve. This is when it all comes out. This was kindergarten. The year was two thousand and two. Let's say I'm new to school. I'm sort of um, finding myself, if you will. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, it was a pivotal point in my life. You're, it was probably 2001. You're five, whatever that would be. Uh, it was 2001. 
beautiful sunny day. Now I think it probably was November. Might have actually been around Christmas time. Who knows? Well, oh right, the yeah. Who cl- knows? The I class don't know. was putting on a play, mm-hmm. and it was the story. What's that story of the, like the hen? Um, I don't know. It's like where she bakes a cake. Yeah, little red hen. Little red hen. I don't know. Anyway, there was a role for the bad fox. Yeah, because he's not in that story. So I don't know what story you were doing. And they might have made it up. It was kindergarten. They yeah. were trying to get... And let me tell you, I've never been more prepared for a role. Stop. You're hurting my feelings. No, it's all right. Because my feelings have been hurt for now 20 years. And we auditioned. Okay. And I had a down. I can still do it to this day. Uh-uh. Okay. Whew. So the fox walks in. The fox walks into the scene ready to steal the uh, the pie. Okay. And he walks in and this is all he says. I'm a mean, green, steel-eyed fox. I ain't no little Goldilocks. If I want a big belly meal, I don't cook. I just steal. Yeah. And it ended with jazz hands. And I crushed. I crushed the um, audition. audition. I crushed the audition. I did so well. Ugh, my thing's coming undone. It's okay. It's all right. There's a lot of things going on on Christmas Eve. Anyway. It's like a psych- psychotherapy or something. Some other kid who didn't deserve it. You don't know if he it didn't deserve politics. it. It was politics. Listen, it, well, teachers sometimes pick not for acting ability. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It was politics. And worse than that. Maybe they were an orphan oh, or something. stop it. I was an orphan. An orphan to theater. Um, nobody accepted me. I had nowhere to belong in the theater world. Long story short, as if it was an insult enough to not become the fox. What? My, I was then cast as cat number three. You know, of like eight cats. I think there was, remember? Because I think yeah. I made the mask. You, you ended up, no, you yeah. ended up having to make the fish. Little, little oh. paper fish. And you know what the cat's role was? You see my, my, my expert acting there, jazz hands? The cat's role during the whole play you sit down in the corner and you look at no. your <laughs> And then on top of that, on top oh, of that, come on. I got in trouble during one of the like the practices because I was talking too much. And it was like, cats don't talk. Be quiet over there. They- and I'm like, I, I, I don't care anymore. Mrs. Mateo was very, very nice. And she would have never said, don't talk. I was, I was scolded for talking during auditions. Oh, I'm sorry. Should have made me the steel-eyed fox. Yeah. Am I still bitter about it 20 years later? Yes. Leave it behind in 2021. No, I still have those lines. One day when I make it, I'm going to sell why don't you, out. Why don't you get that tattooed on you? That would just be so hurtful. It's already tattooed in, on your... It's tattooed on my brain. One brain. day, Miss Mateo, I'm going to sell out Broadway for the stupid hen play. And you know what I'm going to be? Spencer. I'm going to be the fox. You had a... Yeah. You had a... <laughs> You had a very, a very joyful, supported life. What if whoever that was, was somebody who really needed it? You know. Disappointments happen in life. And the, you know the sooner you have them, the more better you, you are in what? life. I would agree with you. Except but you know for, the person? What? Do you know the person? No. Oh. They're probably in jail. <sighs> for stealing. I don't like the way this. <laughs> for stealing rolls. Christmas Eve is probably, going. Probably stealing other things. You know why? why? I I would agree with you, and and I hope that he's doing well. But it's the fact that at the time I cared a lot. I know. And some people would say, "Oh, come on! Like it was kindergarten. Who cares?" Yeah. The fact that I still care twenty years later means it did matter more to me. I don't think he remembers that play. I don't think he remembers guess what? the jazz hands. I remember. There's things in your life that you got and you don't remember. And there's oh. some there's some twenty five year old guy out there being like. I can't believe he got to sit up front or I can't believe they picked his whatever picture, you know? So it's a, just a real give and take. And it's, and it's, oh. God bless. Oh. It's, it's, oh. it's, it's okay. life and life is, is ebb and flow and, and it's fine. You're sometimes, right. Sometimes we get and sometimes we, we don't get. And Who knows how many, how many things I stole from other people. Yeah. Without knowing it. Okay. To that kid 20 years ago, I hope you're on Broadway right now. I have the best for you. Well, Merry, Merry Christmas to you. Do they from have one steel-eyed fox to an, from one cat to a fox? Do they have uh, a smile water? On the they last, don't. On the last day do of they Advent, they have Frank, who's always here for him. Well, me, no. Taste the water. Let us know. I don't like flavored water. Taste it. <laughs>
I don't want to. Taste it. I mean, try it. What does it smell like? Um, like fruit roll ups. A little bit. You're the, the problem with you is you do too much. It's as ba- good. As bad as you thought? No, like I won't drink any more of it. Um, really? But it's not because it's bad. It's because I don't like flavored water. Because like, <laughs> I don't like like sweet juices or anything. Yeah, but isn't it super, super, super light? That's the problem. Uh, and so it's like the worst combination. Because uh, I like water and I'll drink fruit punch. Right. It's like a punch in the, you know, Hawaiian punch. Yeah. Slaps. But it's just like. An old you, cup. You've just, you've just ruined. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. poured water yeah, into, into something. Yeah, that had some juice Had in cranberry it. juice like caked on the bottom. Oh my God. That's the way I say it on this Christmas Eve, on this fine Christmas Eve. Yeah. With you fine people. Well, tomorrow um, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We do. It is the best Christian holiday. And and um, Jesus went through being a human so that he could feel what we felt. And um, he did it for us. And so therefore his his triumphs are our triumph. And so his birthday is our birthday because Jesus is, is, is within all of us. Yes. So we will be doing a birthday a birthday bonanza. A birthday celebration today on um, just hours away from Christmas. Hours away from the, the glorious day that is Maybe Christmas. Maybe minutes away from Christmas. It depends on when we put this <laughs> up. But yes, so we are celebrating birthdays everywhere. Yeah. And so with that So if you're not, if you don't celebrate Christmas, it's not your religion, or you just are not in the mood, um, this is a birthday podcast. It's a birthday podcast. For baby Jesus and babies everywhere and adults <laughs> everywhere. But- if you remember from last Friday, I really kissed the mic there. Yeah. If you remember from last Friday, we're starting a little new thing. Trying a little new thing on Fridays. Yeah. Not just fun Fridays, but Dr. Seuss Fridays. Right. And so you went out and you got another Dr. Seuss book. Right. Where's the, where's the last one? If we it's had a shelf, there. we could keep it. Okay. You're bouncing bean to this today. Last time we read Marvin K. Mooney. Will you please go now? And this week we will read... Happy birthday to you. A pop-up book by Dr. Seuss. My most favorite. That is so shiny. My most favorite, 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 favorite books are pop-up books. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I like Choose Your Own Adventures. No, I love pop-up books so much because they, you know, they pop up they and, are they, fun. and they rotate and they turn and it's just like. Oh now, my God. question is, do you think Dr. Seuss intended yeah. for this to be a pop-up? Oh, no. No, no, no. That's just a regular book. It's just That's just a marketing ploy. So he didn't intend for it to be a pop up book. They've turned it into yeah, one. Yeah, you can turn any you can turn the Bible into pop up book. I would love that. Oh. They must have it. Well, it would have to be Bible stories. Children's Bible, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. have to imagine the entire every single page. It'd oh. be like the biggest book in the world. I would love it. That would be cool actually. Well you could have it could be like encyclopedia volumes. Oh. It wouldn't have to be one book. Groups of stories. Mm-hmm. Or probably just even you can go even one each book. Yeah. We should do that. Just one by one. Rewrite the books. And to, make them pop up? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Be like a 10-year project, but then you would have done it. All right. Oh. Did is... you do it? Did it rip? Or you just... No, I just, oh, I just hit it with fun. the force. I think we're fuzzy, Spence. Oh, my God. All right. Christmas Bonanza. Here we go. Now, okay, I have a question already. Okay. This thing up here has words. Okay. When does that come in the story? I, I would I would read it... Um. Wait, it's already in the story. See the bottom? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> in Catru, every year, on the day you were born, the birthday honk honker blasts the birthday horn. And the voice of the horn calls out loud as it plays, Wake up, for today is your day of all days. I love that. Then the moment the horn's happy honk honk is heard, comes a fluttering flap flap, the great birthday bird. The bird says, Come on. Brush your teeth and get dressed. It's your day of all days. It's the best of the best. Day of all days. I wish you guys could see this pop-up action. You guys well, you put out. it up, don't you? Yeah, oh, the pop-up action. Pop yeah, that would be... Zero pop-up action. Won't be that. And five minutes later, you're having a snack. On your way out of town on a smorgasbord back. Today, laughs a bird, you don't have to be neat. If you wish, you may eat with both hands and both feet. You can do anything on your birthday. Anything. I would love to eat with my feet. <laughs> and now on this day of all days in Katru, Katru the association... Dr. Seuss! The association has built just for you. 
a railway with a very particular boats that are pulled through the air by funicular goats. And here comes your cake cooked by snookers and snookers, the official true happy birthday cake cookers. Today you are you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. There's no one alive that's youer than you. Shout loud, I am lucky to be what I am. Thank goodness I'm not just a clam or a ham. I am what I am. That is a great thing to be. If I say so myself, happy birthday to me. Happy birthday. Dr. Susie did it again. <laughs> happy birthday to you and you and me. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And I just love it because it's fantasy and it is, you know, people are talking about um, their Christmas isn't matching the the stereotypical norms, stereotypical norms of yes. Christmas or their even their birthday. No one cared about my birthday yeah. or because of COVID, no one could come to my birthday or, or this was canceled. That was canceled and, and boohoo. Fantasy world. Think about. The Catrus and the Maloos and the funicular mm. c- goats. That- okay, yeah. I need you to help me. With- <laughs> what is this one word? Funicular? No, the ass. <laughs> I think it's association. Association. I think he just wrote association funny. Okay. He does have made up words. Well, yeah. What, what's a funicular? But a funicular. Goat? Okay, so I'll just it's tell funicular. you. Funicular. Funicular, whatever. I think it's referring to what I think it's referring to. And uh, I went on one in Spain with you with a bunch of children and i was terrified it's like a cable car it's like a trolley cable car that takes you up the side of a mountain oh it's like a looped cable yeah and it it enables you to go all the way up and then you get up there and we like we toured the top of the mountain and then we came down and um I thought it was terrifying. I'm not great with those kind of things. Plus, it was also pretty it was rickety. run down. Like, even rickety. when we got to the top and it was like, nobody was there. It was like yeah. a ghost town. We were alone on it. Yeah. And it was the noises it was making, the creaking and cracking and the rust, rusting. Um, and I do think there, I, I don't know if it was that particular one. That might have just been my mind playing tricks on me, but I do believe one broke. Yeah. Um, but that's a funicular. We don't, I, I've been we don't on, really have them here in, in America. Colorado. Colorado, okay. Um, when I was in Colorado, I think I was in like Aspen or something. And, um, they're obviously very nice and it's like oh yeah indoor and and yeah and it was like uh, i saw a thing it was like it was paid for it by like the taxes or something oh because it just ran 24 7 okay like getting you from up and down of aspen yeah. pretty cool for skiing or just taking you up there taking you up it was, was it aspen it was a small little very wealthy town okay and um there was skiing but mm-hmm. it was like basically two sides like, it, it was there's like the town down here and the town up right. here and so you would be able to skate, but also, yeah. like, we just went up Yeah, clothes. so we were there in the summer, and this was, you know, not, a, not at all like a ski, a ski lift, if you're no. thinking that, if people are thinking that. It was literally like a trolley car, Yeah, but not as big. It was just us, but yeah. it was, it was, I didn't like it. it I didn't a, like it. it you get up, you got to come experience. back down. So that's the other thing. Whenever you go on a trip you don't like and you're only halfway through, you got to get, got to get down. Yeah, you know what you do when you're in the middle of hell? You go, th- keep going through it. Uh, uh, go, when that? you're, yeah, like Winston when, Churchill, when you're, right? go, when you're going through hell, keep going or yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. When you're going through a uh, funicular, keep going. Yeah. But I like this book. I like your take on Christmas and we're all celebrating a birthday. But to skip around, I think I like the most is there is no one alive who is youer than you. This it was like the last two things of. Um, happy birthday or today you are you that is truer than true no one alive who is youer than you shout aloud i am lucky to be who i am but to be what i am thank goodness i'm not a clam or a ham that's important nobody wants to be a clam or a ham <laughs> yeah that is a great thing to to be if i say so myself happy birthday to me and also to your point of like things aren't always the same i think there is a forgotten um not acted on thing enough which is self-celebration oh yeah you know like especially like with christmas time you said obviously we're not out of covid yet right and um you there might be you know you might not have anywhere to go on christmas and and or your birthday or any of this and it's almost like oh it's ruined but it's great to be around people you love there's also a a self-celebration there's no reason you can't have 
you can't celebrate Jesus's birth or your own birthday yeah. or just the holidays by yourself. And and then that's what that, that last you know page says. It's um, I'm lucky to be what I am. And it's like I am what I am. That's a great thing to be. If I say so myself, happy birthday to me. Yeah. How often do you say you wake up on your birthday and say happy birthday to me? Right. Or on Christmas, Merry Christmas to me. Yeah. Yeah. No one can take your birthday away from you, meaning... They can try. The, the, the day that you were born. Yeah. Um. So they might take away your birthday party because it was canceled, or they might say someone, Um. you know, um, what's this? There used to be a song, I left my cake out in the rain, <laughs> and I think it gets rained on or something. It's, some, it's before me, I believe, but many things can happen, to the, but in truth and reality, you, you were born. You were born. You might not have parents. You might not have siblings. You might not yeah, have one that's his parents. No, I meant anymore. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, because as you go through life and you might not have anything, but you do have a birthday. Yes. Even if you forgot what it was, even if someone lied to you about the date. Yes. You were born because you're here. Yes. And so you can celebrate your birthday any and, day. And that's the thing. Any day. Every day. I celebrate it once a month, as you guys yeah. know. But um, that's the thing, right? When we say, you know, especially nowadays when things are all turbulent. You might hear, ah, Halloween's canceled. Christmas is canceled. Yeah. My, but it's not, right? Your birthday party can be canceled, right. but your birthday will never be canceled. No. Christmas party can be canceled, but Christmas will never be canceled. And they, they can try. COVID, Omicron can try, but it will <laughs> never cancel Christmas. No. But, guys, that is it. So, going into the weekend, have the merriest of Christmases and holidays or the peacefulest you know maybe it'll be a silent night for you or maybe you'll be jingling bells but regardless happy birthday to jesus and happy birthday to you any closing words vote for my oh, my yeah. microphone stand vote down in the comments how cute the, is this this is a candy the, look at it this is spongebob it's not a real candy but and i wore a sweater and she didn't i couldn't find any christmas attire well it's green and red we're all we're all look Christmassy enough, don't this we? My birthday attire. Ah. I have on my birthday suit under this. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Peace.